Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to make a little lesson about diminished scales and how to use them in common practice. Sometimes this is a confusing concept for intermediate players because there's actually two diminished scales, but they're both the same scale. So today I want to kind of demystify a little bit of this for you guys and give you some play along tracks. There's a PDF of this lesson which is linked down in the description below. So I hope you guys get some good out of this. This is a really cool sound to add to your vocabulary that fits over basically every type of music. Think about this as basically two different sounds. One is what we would play over a fully diminished chord. So if you see a G diminished 7 for instance, play this scale but the other place which may be more common especially in rock and funk playing uh, but jazz too is whenever it's the five chord that's a dominant seven resolving to the one chord so for today's example we're just gonna play like for instance in the key of C minor the five chord would be G so anytime you have a G chord or a G7 that resolves back to C minor. Five, one, five, one. Anytime you have that sound over the five chord is also a place to play diminished scale. Okay, so let me just start with showing you guys the basic little shape. Um, a lot of people like to get really fast at the scale on guitar, especially a lot of shred and sweeping guys, because the shape is pretty easy and it's kind of cool. So first I'm going to show you just the basic little bit. So diminished scale is actually an eight note scale. It's perfectly symmetrical and it's built up entirely of stacked intervals that are half steps followed by whole steps. Okay, so it's just alternating half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, all the way up the neck. So for instance, Let's take a look at this first little tetrachord on the sheet. If we start it on G, half step, whole step, half step, okay? G, A flat, B flat, B natural. So here's the really cool thing on the guitar neck. If we just played this pattern starting on G, third fret on the low string, and we wanted to continue this, we could just drop down a string and start on the fourth fret uh, of the A string. And every string we went down, we would just go straight down. So on the D string, fifth fret, on the G string, sixth fret, and just keeps going up one fret at a time every string that you go up uh, until you get to the B string because that's the intervals between the B and the G string is different uh, in standard tuning we have to skip two frets higher so this would be starting on the eighth fret for G and then on the high string we'd be starting at the ninth fret so here's what it would sound like all together slide my first finger up and down but some people like to do pinky up so they go like one two three or sorry so they go one two four four I just think it's easier to slide my first finger but that's just personal preference also worth noting there's more than one fingering for the scale this is just one cool easy way So that scale that we just played is called the half whole diminished because it starts with the half step interval. G to A flat, that's a half step. So it's a half step start and then a whole step and then a half step. And then the 
distance from here to here is a whole step. So half, whole, half, whole, half, whole. Starting the scale with a half step. Now the other type of diminished scale is if we just took this and started with a whole step interval instead of the half step. So imagine we just lowered that whole shape down one fret, but still started on the G. So we would start with that second note, and then we would start whole step, half step, then continue our pattern. Same pattern all the way up, just starting one fret below where we were. So that's the confusing part. If we start with the half step from G, it's G half whole diminished. If we go down a step, started on the F sharp, we would be playing F sharp half whole or G whole half. So F sharp half whole, same as G whole half. So even though they're the same scale shape, they're two completely different sounds and uses. We'll go into how to play it in just a second, but one more cool thing about this shape, you'll notice if you just played every other note, starting from G, from either scale, you would get this sound. One to four. Stacked minor thirds. People like to get real shreddy on it, like, you know, if you can add some patterns to it. You know, on and on and on. That kind of thing. And there's different ways to finger that too. Here's another pretty common way to finger that arpeggio instead of continuing to go up. If you wanted to play in position, uh, I think this is really common. Let's say we're just still starting on G. We might do the first three of that and then go to middle finger. Just play middle finger on this one note on the G string and then our pattern resets on the B. That's a pretty fast fingering too. Okay, so here's how we would use this over a G chord, okay? So if we're playing G7 going to C minor, on the G chord, if we play the half hole diminished, it will outline a G7 flat nine chord. You can kind of hear that resolution, right? G7 going to C. Okay, now, over the G7, if we play G half whole diminished, that's gonna sound really great. So here's kind of a nice way to practice this. I made a loop just going from G7 to C minor. Try to resolve your lines from the half whole diminished to a C minor lick. Could be blues lick, whatever. So for instance, two bars of G, so C minor. arpeggio I find it useful to think about it starting from one of the chord tones of the G chord so for instance if you go down a whole step and play it from the flatted 7 the F here's the F if we played that arpeggio from the F we would be playing the flat 7 of G the flat 9 which is the A flat the major third and the fifth the D so flat 7 flat 9 third fifth. We're not playing the G note. We're not playing the root of the chord, but it sounds really great over the G. You 
could also think about it from the playing from the third of the G, right? So maybe here for, at the B, seventh fret. So that arpeggio shape is a nice way to keep it kind of in position rather than playing horizontally across the fretboard this way. Um, we can kind of keep in position. So especially if you're playing like a C minor sort of blues box, right? Like right here. Then we have a nice scale shape right there starting from the F right there in this position. here so C minor pentatonic and G7 ah. <laughs> so that's how we might use the arpeggio also over the G chord This also works if you're going to a major chord, so say it's G7 going to C major. Say the chord progression was D minor 7, G7, C major 7. It's all about how you resolve it. So for instance, G7, C major. So hopefully that's a good start for you guys on the road to diminished. If you have any questions or get stuck, let me know in the comments down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We just passed 800 subscribers on the channel. So thank you guys so much uh, from the bottom of my heart for the support. And I'll see you in the next video. All right, peace.